Welcome to the first of our Henry Box School Geography Department YouTube videos. This one will be looking at Durdle Door. This is the case study that many of you will choose if the 8 mark exam question asks for a coastal landform. During the course of this video what we hope to do is explain where Durdle Door is, the key features of Durdle Door and how it's formed and what the future of Dirt or Door is likely to hold. This should hopefully give you the information that you need to be able to answer any of the eight mark questions that comes up about this with confidence. Now, as with any geographical case study, the first thing we need to know is where it's located. As you'll be able to see on this map, Dirt or Door is located approximately one kilometre west of Lower Village. It's located on the south coast, uh, on the English Channel, uh, on a stretch of coast more famously known as the Jurassic Coast, and is actually part of the, the county of Dorset. Once we know where Dirt or Door is located, then the next important question is to understand the, uh, what the key features are. Now before we can actually look at the actual arch itself, it's really important to understand the geology of the area. What you'll see here from this ladle diagram is that actually Dirt or Door is made of a number of different rock types. All of these, unusually for sedimentary rocks, are actually vertical. And that's because 50 million years ago, when the Alps was forming, this whole area was compressed and folded to form these vertical layers of rock which run parallel to the coast. Now the oldest and most important of these is this layer of rock here, which is by far the hardest, and this is the Portland limestone. The Portland limestone uh, was used for the Houses of Parliament when it was being built and it was chosen because it was so hard. And this explains why this rock and none of the others actually juts out into the bay. If we then look behind the Portland limestone, what we will see is a number of weaker rocks. First of all, we have this layer here. This is a, a layer of rock called the Purbeck limestone. It's actually made out of limestones and, and mudstones. And while relatively hard, erodes quite quickly in comparison to the Portland. The softest rocks in this area are actually behind that. And these are the green sands and clays and various other weak, easily eroded rocks um, that form this sort of slumped area here. The final rock, and the youngest rock, is at the back of the bay, and this forms a chalk. And this forms quite large, substantial headlands and cliffs uh, further on along this stretch of coastline. But for us, most importantly of all, is to understand that this layer here, the Portland limestone, which runs all the way along this coast, is very, very resistant to erosion. Far more resistant than elsewhere. Once we understand the geology, we can now have a look at the actual arch itself. This is one of the largest natural arches in the UK. It is 60 metres from top to bottom and juts out about 100 metres or so into the, the sea. The actual gap here with the arch is about 25-30 metres across. All of this is formed of this very resistant rock, Portland Limestone. And because it's such a spectacular feature, along with other uh, stretches along this coastline, has been declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This is the high, highest award that the United Nations can give any physical feature. Now, once you've actually been able to describe its key features, it's almost certain that the exam question will then either ask you how it formed, or how it's likely to change in the future. Key to answering this question is to be able to draw a diagram like this. So, if you haven't got this in your notes, I suggest you stop the video here and you quickly draw a sketch of it. Or, even if you have, at this point it might well be worth pausing the video and trying to draw this diagram from memory. Certainly that's a very good revision technique that you can try later. What I like about this diagram is that it takes you step by step through the different processes. So we start with the first number one, and what will happen is that the sea will erode and attack the Portland limestone, and where there are joints or cracks, uh, you will start to see that erosion through the process of hydraulic action, abrasion, and because it's a limestone solution, that crack will start to form into a cave. 
as you can see through stage two and three, this cave is becoming larger and larger until that cave now uh, basically runs all the way through the Portland limestone. This uh, is now called a bridge. And when this happens along this particular stretch of coastline, the soft rocks behind the Portland limestone are incredibly weak and easily eroded. So very, very quickly behind the Portland limestone, those rocks will be eroded. At this point, this is when the, uh, the arch has now formed. So, if you think of Dirtle Door, we're really looking now at a feature which is at stage 4 according to this diagram. However, the erosion is going to be ongoing. And it's particularly going to attack the arch at the base of the arch. So, you will see, yet again, more hydraulic action, abrasion, solution, attacking the base of the, the arch. This erosion at the base of the arch, here and here, will actually cause a wave cut notch. Now, as this wave cut notch gets bigger and bigger and bigger, eventually the arch will widen, and at some point the arch will become so wide it can no longer support the roof of the arch. This then leads to the collapse of the, the roof, which is shown in stage 5. This in turn creates a new feature called a stack, stage 6. Yet more and more erosion, again in the form of wake cut notches at the base, will eventually erode that away and given time that will actually form a stump, the final phase here, uh, stage 7. One thing worth mentioning is that you notice I've used lots of technical phrases for the erosion. I've not used attrition, and because that form of erosion is about the, the sort of the load in the actual sea banging together, it's not actually a process that, that actually affects here, and that's key. Because if you're going to get top marks on this question, then you must understand those key terms and processes. So you have the three types of erosion that are going on here: this abrasion, yeah. The, basically the scratching, the wearing away of the rock due to the sand and shingle that's actually in the waves. The hydraulic action, which is the force of the waves, in particular uh, when a wave hits the rock, forcing air into cracks, which then actually widens those cracks. And solution, which is the dissolving of the rock. Now this is particularly important because all of the rocks here, the Portland and Burbeck are actually limestones and therefore are prone to solution. We've also talked about this process of forming a wave cut notch and this idea of a bridge. Basically, when the sea punches a hole through the Portland limestone, breaching that hard outer layer, if you like, it's then able to rapidly erode the rocks behind. Now, once you understand those key features, then by looking at this, you can actually this picture, you can actually see what it's going to look like in the future. Because in the middle distance, what you can actually see here is actually a, a stump. Um, and it's quite possible that in a few hundred years that may be all that remains of Dirdle Door. So we're coming to the end of this video. We've looked at the formation of Dirdle Door. We've looked at the key characteristics of it. We've looked at the future of Dirdle Door. We've also looked at where it's located. So it's about time we have a look at a past exam question. You may be familiar with this one. It's one that came up in your... Uh, mock exam. So it's worth us just having a quick look at it. So first typical question would be name and locate a coastal feature you've studied. Again, get that idea of it being on the south coast, the Jurassic coast, South Dorset, and if you want you can locate it approximately a kilometre away from Logwood Village. The second question after describe the Features, it will ask you to draw a diagram if you wish. My advice would be learn to draw a decent diagram. If you can draw a really good, high quality diagram, label the height, label the width, label the rock type, you don't need to put that down in words. That's actually going to count for you. If you're going to end up drawing a sort of Mickey Mouse sketch just for the sake of it, then don't bother, it won't get you any points. But if you can draw a high quality diagram, that can actually be better than large amounts of writing. However, the key part of this question is going to be explaining the processes. Here, you need to talk about how Dirdle Door is going to change over time. You need to be using technical terms, 
wave cut notches, arches, collapse, stacks and stumps. And you need to be linking those to the physical processes. So you need to be talking about the abrasion, the hydraulic action, the solution. And you need to be explaining what those terms are. If you can manage that, and if you remember to include that sort of key components, so that's one piece of plate specific information, a balanced answer that includes both parts, and you've made three distinct developed points using PE+, then there's no reason why you can't get eight marks. Why don't you at this point stop the video, go over any bits and have a go at this. I'm sure your geography teacher will be really excited to mark it. So, thank you ever so much. I hope this has been of use. If you do have any feedback, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, we'd like to know whether this works for you or how we can change it in any way or if you've got any other good solutions. But for now, thank you.